I see you have your textbooks with you. I trust you've already shared your scriptures with one another, and now you're ready to get just that little Reader's Digest foretaste of what's coming in your next assignment. So let us now finish and conclude this series with Session 5, and we're going to cover reasons 37 through 40, plus I'll give you a little summary. Reason number 37, the social... Political and religious climates are changing in America and worldwide. In 1892, the Supreme Court unanimously issued what was called the Trinity Decision. It stated that we, the United States of America, are emphatically a Christian nation. Wow, what happened? Were you as stunned as I was? when someone in authority in this country stood up and said, we are not a Christian nation. I was stunned. I admit, we've lost our moral compass, many of us. We've gone astray, and we've allowed the American atheists and the ACLU and gay and lesbian groups and abortionists and Hollywood and far-left whatevers, their agendas, we let them force a lot of that on us, but not a Christian nation. You know, in my way of thinking, we need just a few more of those Ten Commandment plaques that have been ripped off the walls of schools and public places, nailed back on a few walls to remind us of our shortcomings and our sins. Worldwide, it is open season on Christians and Jews. Islam can say Allah is God. Atheists can say there is no God. Satanists can say Satan is God. Hedonists can say pleasure is God. New Agers can say anything is God, but you let a Jew say Jehovah is God, you let a Christian say Jesus Christ is God, and the world goes ballistic. I go into this in great detail in the book. And let me make it perfectly clear. Allah is not Jehovah. How do I know that? Well, if you've been to Israel, you've been to the Al-Alas Mosque, in the Arabic is written on the top, Allah has no sons. Jehovah has a son. So they can't be one and the same. So when that, uh, by the way, uh, what country is it? I can't remember right off hand. But they're replacing the word God in the Bible with Allah. In the Christian Bible, Because why don't we just, you know, we can make a a peace if we're all just calling the same thing. God help us. Just about anyone and anything has come out of that proverbial closet. When all that's coming out of the closets, what do the Christians do? They're running into the closet. They're hiding. It's time for the Christians to come out of the closet. And it's time for us to live righteous lives that people can see. And they can see that our God is for us. It's time to do it while there is still time where you have the freedom to do it. Before you're saying certain things could be considered hate speech. And you could be muzzled. Now is the time to share the gospel. Reason number 37, the political, religious, and social climates are changing in America and worldwide. Reason number 38, and I love this one. The feast of the Lord are pointing to the feast of trumpets as the next feast to be fulfilled by Christ. God created time on earth, and he divided it into day and night, and he called that day and night the first day, and that's recorded in Genesis 1, 1 through 5. Then God framed the word of God, and thus he created history, which we read about in Hebrews 11.3. Then he proclaimed the celebration of certain feasts in Leviticus. These are often referred to mistakenly as the Jewish feasts because the Jews were the first ones to celebrate them, but God calls them his feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord, the Lord's feasts. 
first feast he created was the Sabbath. He wanted a day of rest for everybody, just like he had rested on the Sabbath day. Then he created seven more feasts. The purpose of each and every one of them is to point the way to Yeshua HaMashiach. They are shadows. They are rehearsals for what was to be fulfilled in the future, what some of them have and some of them haven't. We're going to talk about that. All right, the first feast, Passover. We understand Passover when the angel of death passed over. We know Jesus fulfilled that feast. He was the Passover lamb. So that one has been fulfilled by Jesus. You know, it talks about in Pentecost when the day of Pentecost was fully come, meaning when it was really being fulfilled finally. All right, so when Passover was fully come was when Christ died for our sins. The second feast is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is a shadow of the burial of Christ. Well, we know that he was buried. So that feast has been fulfilled. The third feast is called First Fruits. It was celebrated for years as just a shadow of the resurrection of the First Fruit, capital F, which was Jesus Christ. We know that feast has fully come. It has been fulfilled. Wait 50 days. And then you have the fourth feast. We know it is Pentecost. When that feast was being celebrated all those years, it was just a shadow or a rehearsal for the day the Holy Spirit would be poured out and the church would be birthed. Just as Jesus said, I'm going to send you a helper. Has that feast been fulfilled? Yes, it has. So we've got one, two, and three, the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ fulfilled. We've got Pentecost fulfilled. That leaves us with feast number five. Let's see what is in feast number five and if that's exciting or relevant to us. It's called the Feast of Trumpets, and it is a shadow of an event yet to come when a trumpet sounds, and something happens the day that trumpet sounds, that... The dead in Christ rise first, then we who are alive. So this has yet to be fulfilled in the future. This Feast of Trumpets has yet, but it's the next one. It's the next one to be fulfilled. Then after it is fulfilled comes the Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur. That was just a shadow of the judgment of God someday. That hasn't fully come yet. Then there's the seventh feast. It's called the Feast of Booths or Tabernacles. It's just a shadow of the day when all the nations will go up to Jerusalem to worship Yeshua HaMashiach. That hasn't come yet. So we have the first four feasts fulfilled, fully come. We have the fifth one that's imminent, the Feast of Trumpets, which will be followed by the atonement or the judgment, which will be followed by the millennial or the period or the time when the nations go up to Jerusalem. I have devoted over 15 pages to this important subject in this book. But just for now, I'm going to say reason number 38, the feast of the Lord are pointing to the feast of trumpets as the next feast to be fulfilled by Christ. Check. Reason number 39, there is a global arms race underway and Russia is resuming her role as a militaristic nation, or the role, rather. Joel 3.9, remember, says, tell the men to prepare for war. Revelation 16, 15 and 16 tells us there's going to be a war to end all wars, and it's going to be in a place called Armageddon. Now, on Friday, April the 29th, At 10.24 a.m., I went to the website to check the population of the earth. It stood at 6,841,493,578 souls. Think of them as souls, not people, souls. Then in the one minute I spent on the site checking that, in one minute the population had increased by 147 souls that quickly. So imagine every... Every minute as the world goes by, in the United States, 85% of these souls profess to be Christians. Billy Graham says that number is probably closer to 40% of professing Christians are true believers. Now, happily, this 40% 
is going to disappear one day. We're going to vanish, and that's going to decrease the population a little bit. But unhappily, there are other events that are going to occur on this earth that are going to reduce the population considerably. And it will happen during a seven-year period called the Tribulation. It will be the worst time of hell the earth has ever known. Because we've already learned there are going to be famines, plagues, earthquakes, meteors, other catastrophic events. There's going to be war, terrible wars. And one such war is going to be led by a country called Gog of Magog or Russia. But we thought Russia had been put in her place after the breakup of the Soviet Union. Well, guess who's back? Russia is coming back, and she's coming back with a vengeance. She is aligned with the kings of the south most notably Iran or ancient Persia. She is aligned with the kings of the east. She will attack Israel for her spoils, but God will solve this problem quickly, and five-sixths of her army will be destroyed. I always wondered why not six-six. But hey, somebody's got to go back and tell the story about this God in Israel, and it'll be that six that go back to tell what happened in Israel that day. And remember, dinner bell's going to ring, and who's coming for dinner? The griffin vultures, because there's going to be a lot of dead and rotting and decaying bodies. Said they will be burying the dead for seven months. On page 17 of On the Brink of the Rapture, again, I show you how every nation is just the pawn on the chessboard, what God said what the prophet said would be happening and what's happening now and how they are all aligning with one another against this itsy-bitsy, teeny little place called Israel, the size of our smallest state, and yet it looms large in the world today. The whole world, let me tell you, as Israel goes, so goes the world. You want to know what's happening? Take a look at Israel. That's God's prophetic timepiece. And what, you know, I didn't understand this for years. Where was I? I didn't know all this. It wasn't until I was so miraculously called to ministry. And God said to me, you're going to wake up the church. Oh, yeah, what do we do? Get on the phone, start calling people. Hello, wake up call. I didn't know. I didn't know if you spell prophecy, P-R-O-P-H-E-C-Y or S-Y. God put me through three years of very intense study before he let me say a word. So I didn't know all this. I had no idea what was going on on TV. I just saw, like, oh, man, what a mess, what a mess over there. Why don't they just put them all on a big fence and let them fight it out? You know, I didn't know. So I was saying stupid stuff like that. Now I know. Israel, keep your eyes on Israel. Bless Israel. God will bless you for it. Let your voice be heard. Stand up. It's not political. It's spiritual. It's an obligation we have. Make no mistake about it. Israel is the key. And in the book I talk again about North Korea, China, Japan, Iran, Iraq, Egypt, Syria, Turkey, Germany, Venezuela, and Russia. And I show you how every nation is armed to the teeth and how stealthily the nations are eyeballing little Israel. Reason number 39, there is a global arms race underway and Russia is resuming her role as a militaristic nation. Check. Number 40. Here we are at the end. Number 40, the testimony of reliable scholars, evangelists, and theologians concerning present day events as last day prophecy grows louder and more frequent. Dr. Ed Heinsohn, the king is coming, said, make no mistake about it. The end time battle has already begun. Dr. Billy Graham, now he's been the most neutral, you know, salvation message, salvation message, salvation message. I mean, it was hard to know how he felt about anything, and that was on purpose. Neutral message. In his book now, Approaching Hoofbeats, he tells you, listen carefully and you will hear the hoofbeats of the four horsemen of the apocalypse approaching. Pope Benedict has said, 
The Antichrist is alive and ready to come on stage. And in this book, you will see a list of over 31 scholars whose works I personally study who are heralding the soon return of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh, there are so many, many more. And the list would have taken up the whole book if I'd included everybody. So I decided I would just go with the ones that I'd personally studied and learned from. Reason number 40, the testimony of reliable scholars and evangelists and theologians concerning present-day events as last-day events grow louder and more frequent? Check. All right, this is going to be fun. You're going to check off the list with me. I'm going to name the reason, and if you believe that it has happened, you're going to say in unison, check. Let's practice. Number one. Uh, I'll try that one more time. Number one. Yeah. I know, that's it. That's what you want them to hear over there in China and Japan and all over the world. All right. Number one, Israel has been reborn as a nation. Yeah. Jerusalem has been restored to Israel. Yeah. The Jews are returning to Israel, especially from Russia. Yeah. Israel becoming the burdensome stone of the world. Yeah. The Roman Empire has been revived. Yeah. The age of the Gentiles is being fulfilled. The days of Noah have returned. Yes. The apostate church is here. Yes. The signs of deception and false Christ are being manifested today. Yes. The gospel is being preached to the ends of the earth. Yes. Knowledge has exploded. Yes. TV has been invented. Yes. Nuclear power has been discovered. Yes. Automobiles and jets have been invented. Yes. Temple plans are ready in Israel. Yes. The red heifer's back. The Mediterranean sea snail has returned. Yeah. The griffin vultures are returning to Israel. All yeah. oh, the Levites are being located and positively identified by DNA. Yeah. The Sanhedrin has returned. Yeah. Wars and rumors of wars abound and kingdoms are rising up against kingdoms. Yeah. Famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and fearful and great signs in the heavens are initiating the end-time birth pangs. Yeah. Major asteroids are predicted. Oh, a geological fault is found in Israel. Yes. Prophetic scriptures are being revealed. Yes. Percentages of Bible prophecy fulfilled and the statistics surrounding the possibilities of this fulfillment are staggering and inconceivable. Yes. The Bible codes are being unlocked. Yes. The pure Hebrew language has been restored. Yes. The possibility of a 200 million man army exists today. Yes. The technology exists for the mark of the beast. Yes. Cloning's no longer a dream. Yeah. A series of dams have been built in Turkey to drive the Euphrates River. Yeah. The war in Iraq has opened the window to the Middle East of the gospel. Yeah. The world's three major religions are expecting their Messiah or prophet very soon. Yeah. There's the possibility of a peace agreement that now exists between Israel and the Arab nations. Yeah. All the results of blessing and or cursing Israel have been proven through the ages and are being proven today. The social, religious, and political climate is changing in America and worldwide. Yes. The feast of the Lord are pointing to the feast of prophets as the next feast to be fulfilled by Christ. Yes. There is a global arms race underway, and Russia is resuming the role of a militaristic nation. Yes. And number 40, the testimony of reliable scholars, evangelists, and theologians concerning present-day events as last-day events grow louder and more frequent. Yes. Let us all now purpose in our hearts that we are going to get ourselves ready. We're going to get prepared. We're going to watch for the signs. We're going to pray often that we're found worthy to escape, worthy to vanish. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not sure you want to pray that. Let me, let me tell you why you might not want to pray that. Because if you pray it, you just ask God to correct you. Lord, I pray that I'm found worthy to escape what's coming upon this earth. You just gave the Holy Spirit license to come in and clean you out, clean you up. If it's necessary to be rapture ready, then do it. Okay, so you're watching for the signs. You know 40 of them now. You know that you can pray and ask God to help you be worthy. And, they, and we're told in Luke 21 to pray that often. My husband and I pray it every day. And then we're to live a Christian lifestyle. That's it. Get prepared because Jesus is coming back soon. It is time 
for to wake up the church, and that's not just my job now. You know, once you've got the knowledge, it's your job. It's time to wake up the church and help the church discern the times in which we are living. It's time to understand and implement our God-given mandate to bless Israel and the Jewish people. There you have it. We've talked 40 reasons. As I said, I'm working on notes for a second book. And it's my hope that you have been waked up today and that you will help me teach Gentiles about our God-given responsibility to Israel and the Jewish people. This ministry is doing all that it knows how to do. We are working 14-hour days, six days a week. We are... We are praying, we're fasting, we're giving into ministries, and we are listening to God, and he's telling us some fantastic things to do in Project Vision, Project Whisper. We've got all kinds of things to do. We're doing all we can humanly possibly do. We need the rest of you now to do your part of it too, and God will bless you for it because I don't think there's anybody that you even dislike enough to make to want them to have to go through what is coming upon this earth. You wouldn't wish it on anybody. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this series as much as I did when I watched it and have watched it with you. It has been so informative, and I know it's been a blessing to you. Fritz, you have shared so much information with us. I cannot believe there's even more. But you said there's even more than these 40. Uh, you're, you even have a new series, a new DVD series that's going to be coming out. So you want, I want you viewers to actually stay on top of this because and go to 3R1.com regularly to watch for that new series. So tell us a little bit more. Okay, well, you know, some of those signs which I'm uh, studying now, possibly for a second uh, book and a second series. See, we haven't touched on yet the economy. Uh, runaway inflation that is uh, uh, prophesied. Uh, the Bible says the, uh, the worldwide economy will fail in one hour. We used to think that was impossible. We have not addressed uh, uh, a one world religion yet or a one world government, so there's still a lot for us to examine. But I'm hoping that after seeing this series, you feel more prepared and you know that you have the battle plan mm -hmm. and you you know that God told you to be not troubled and be not afraid yeah so the new series that we're doing is called what in the world is going on and we'll be shooting that at early 2012 okay and in that one we explore the different terrorist groups where they're located what countries are having play dates with what countries how the nations are aligning on the chessboard because Bible prophecy is like a chessboard only a few of the pieces are invisible mm -hmm. but the pieces that are visible the 40 reasons plus the other reasons that we know are in the Bible those pieces are lined up on the chessboard and I'm going to show you in that series how every nation has now taken its place for the final checkmate Wow Okay, again, how can people get this video series? We want to talk about that a little bit. I, I was really quite impressed with the fact of all the different dialogues uh, that you have this available in. You've got it in Spanish and I, Hindi, I think you said. We've I'm got it in English, Spanish, uh, Hebrew, Russian, Thai, uh, Urdu for Pakistan, Hindi for India. We're working on Chinese, Arabic, uh, Persian, and we're going to continue to put these the book on our website for free. I for know. free. I mean, you can so read it free <laughs> or download it free. Or if you're like I am, I like to have a book. You want to? Yeah. And you can make a donation of ten dollars and have your own copy. Or if you enjoyed the series, which I know you did, because God gave it to me. You can order the series you just watched called The 40 Reasons Why We Could Be the Generation. You can go on to our store and pay $35 for this series. Or if you want to hold a class in a cell group, home study, Sunday school, because you can see there are times for about 30 minutes. And that's really how you and your husband got started. It is. You would have dinner parties and have people over and we share. We had dinner and a movie. Mm -hmm. Now that's three years after I was called. That's after I studied for three years before the Lord let me teach even five minutes. 
and we would have people over to our home and call it dinner and a movie. We would tell them in advance it was not an ambush. We would say we're going to talk about world events and, and what the Bible has to say. Then we would play a movie. Uh, sometimes it was left behind. Sometimes it would be another movie. Uh, we'd give them dinner, watch the movie, stop halfway, ask if anybody had any questions, finish it, ask again if they had any questions, and then we'd say, we don't know why the Lord put you on this particular guest list. You're going to have to ask him, but we have been obedient. So maybe the Lord has put it on your heart now that you should share. I, well, that's what I was just thinking. I'm yeah. telling you, I see home study groups Absolutely. starting up because of this. Maybe you've wondered all along, what am I going to do? I feel led to, to, to share this. Right. Start this up, and I know this. Right. We can email you questions, couldn't we? Absolutely. If somebody asked us a question, we could answer. Absolutely. And you would answer it first, wouldn't you? Well, and we provide what's will. called a facilitator's guide. Yeah. And and this would carry you through having at least ten people in your in your little group. And if you can wave bye bye, you can follow this syllabus. It is so simple. It says take out DV one, put it in. <laughs> Tell the class to read this, ask this question. Okay. So it's all done for you. But for a $35 donation, you can get the series. For $50, you can get the series plus the teacher's manual. I hate to rush us, but we've got about two and a half minutes now. Our and time goes so it quickly. It does, doesn't it? But we want to lead those of you yes. to the Lord that, that maybe have watched this program. And, and I want to turn that over to you and you do that because okay. you've done this teaching. And now it's time for you to reap the harvest. Well, a few <laughs> weeks ago, I was on uh, Diane's program, You Make the Difference. And at that time, I said, it's time for us to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, are we ch uh, people who go to church as church members, or are we Christians who attend church? You know, maybe this series has uh, ignited uh, some fear in you. The Bible talks about two classes of people in the end days, those whose hearts will fail with fear and those who will be looking up knowing their redemption draweth nigh. Two types of fear. There's the fear that paralyzes you and there is the fear that ignites you or propels you to do something. If you have that kind of fear right now and you want to make absolutely positively no doubt about it, six stacks, no take back, sure that you're going to be in the rapture. You can pray this prayer with me now if you are saved, you can pray it as a saved person who's backslidden. But let's go to the Lord now. Yes. And let's express our desire to have him come into our hearts. Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we ask, Lord, that you would forgive our sins. Jesus, you took my sin upon yourself. And as I was once born of my mother, I can now be born a second time. Lord, I want to know that I am not going to be left behind. I want to be with you for all eternity. I trust you, Lord, as my God and the Son of God. I ask you now to come into my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. You've just made the best decision of your entire life. Yes, and I want to ask you, I, I'm rejoicing, and all of heaven's rejoicing for those that have Absolutely. just made that profession. Absolutely. I want to remind you now, next week, we've got this one hour live call in. Well, actually, we want you to text your messages, email them, call us, whatever, but they need to all be in by the 25th so we can get the panel ready to answer your questions, and we're going to answer every one of them to the best of our ability. Right. We're going to take one hour. So next for, uh, Thursday night will be from 7 until 8. Right. And so, uh, and that should be coming up on the screen pretty yes. soon. You can call in. You can fax it. You can snail mail it. You can, uh, in, uh, in, in, we have five different ways you can get yes. that message to us, to that question. So we look forward to next week. Bye-bye now.